there's so much water in there. How do you think the tank like manages that? Isn't that like a lot of pressure? You know what? It is, but we can actually measure how much water, how much pressure the water puts on the tank. Really? That's so cool. Will you show me? Yeah, of course. I just have to get some measurements. So I got the measurements of the fish tank and we can do some calculations about the hydrostatic pressure and the forces. Um, we're going to make some assumptions that there are no fish, fish and coral in the tank, which is a really sad tank, but it will give us an idea of the maximum amount of hydrostatic pressure in the tank. And we're also going to assume that the top of um, the tank was exposed to, is exposed to atmosphere. Um, to find the hydrostatic pressure, um, it's a very simple equation. We start at, from a point of pressure that we know, so we'll start from point one. Um, and since uh, we know that the top of the water is exposed to atmosphere, the pressure at point one is zero. Um, and then as we go down, uh, the pressure is increasing, so we ha add the pressure head, and the pressure head is basically the density times gravity, times the change in elevation. Um, and then the change in elevation is the height of the water, which we calculated as 0 0.68 meters. Um, so once we multiply it all together, the density of water is um, 100 kilograms per meter square, meter cubed. Uh, gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, and the height, um, Different differential between the top of the tank and the bottom is 0 0.68 meters. So then we get um, a pressure of 66,640 pascals um, at the bottom of the fish tank. And just to keep in mind, pressure doesn't change um, along the x y plane. So the pressure is the same all along the bottom of the fish tank. Um, but now we should also look into how much force is uh, resultant because of the hydrostatic pressure. Um, so first we'll look at the force on the bottom of the tank. Um, and the force is basically pressure times area. Um, so we found that the pressure on the bottom of the tank is 66, about 66 kilopascals um, and then it's easy to calculate the force on the bottom because the uh, pressure is perpendicular. The force is acting perpendicular to the area, um, and then we just find the area of the bottom of the tank, which is 24 meters times one meter squared, and then we found that the pressure is um, not the pressure. The force is 159,408 newtons on the bottom bottom wall of the tank. Um, and then to, fi um, to find the force at the sidewalls, we'll use the pre pressure prism method. Um, and this is basically um, what the pressure prism looks at, looks like on the sidewall. Um, so on the bottom, we will use um, specific weight times height, which is basically the pressure at the bottom of the tank. Uh, one meter is the width of the sidewall, and then 0.6 meter is the height of the sidewall. Um, so if we look at, if we try to find the volume of a triangular pressure prism, that's how we get this calculation of um, gamma times height times the width times the height divided by 2. And then, then we get about 22,657.6 newtons of force at the sidewall. Uh, we do the same thing at the back wall. Um, back and the front wall. Uh, the dimensions just change a little. Um, the bottom is still, so now the width is 2.4 meters, that height is 6.8 meters, um, and then we get 54,378.24 newtons at the back walls and the front walls of um, the fish tank. So we can also um, look at where the forces act exactly. So if we're looking at the forces on the bottom of the tank, it acts exactly um, at the centroid, which is going to be at the middle of the um, bottom of the tank, which is around 1.2 meters. Um, and then 
Um, for the forces on the sidewall, the force acts on the centroid of the shape, and we know the centroid of a triangular prism is one third from the bottom, um, so the force will act around 0 0.22 meters from the bottom. Um, and that is the same on the side wall and the back wall. So um, the force acting on the bottom will act right on the centroid. The force acting on the side walls will act um, one third from the bottom because it's a triangular prism. So around here, I guess this way. This. So this type of calculation is really important to do in the real world, especially when we're building any type of structure like aquariums and dams. Uh, we need to know how much pressure or force that the water is push putting on the uh, building or structure so to make sure it can withstand it and hold it. Um, and this is just a really small scale simplified version of it, but I hope it helped you understand um, how to calculate the pressure and the forces put um, by the pressure, by forces put on by the hydrostatic pressure.